David Cronenberg has finally made his long-awaited return to the body horror genre with his new film, Crimes of the Future. We're gonna talk a little bit about the movie, and then we're gonna break down this beautiful package from Second Sight with this amazing 4K release. But let's talk about this movie a little bit because um, it's different. It's, it's different. Crimes of the Future feels like the kind of dream that you really, really want to wake up from. Originally titled Painkillers, David Cronenberg's alternate future piece manages to wrap a social commentary inside a fever dream of dark humor, sci-fi horror, and gives us a glimpse of what a dystopian future of post-consumerism could feel like, and Cronenberg's film feels more prescient than ever. In this world, people feel no pain, they consume plastic as nourishment, and our main characters perform public surgery as a form of performance art and entertainment. Viggo Mortensen's character is afflicted with what Cronenberg calls accelerated evolution syndrome, causing him to spontaneously sprout new novel organs which are then removed and tattooed in front of a wide-eyed crowd like some kind of post-apocalyptic freak show. To drum up tension, a subplot of characters harvesting organs, as well as a police force attempting to stop this seedy underground art world, are included making this bizarre story even further realized. By the time this film's credits roll, you may have more questions than answers, but I think that's Cronenberg's intention to elicit thoughts of the crimes of the past and to prepare us for our crimes of the future. This film was written back in the late 90s and it feels like vintage Cronenberg. We haven't had a body horror Cronenberg movie in over 20 years. David Cronenberg says he doesn't like the term body horror because he doesn't see the human body as horrific, but us horror fans do. And guys, I gotta say, I absolutely, I, I loved this movie. I wasn't really sure what to expect going into this. I thought it may have been a little too metaphorical or ambiguous or strange, judging by the odd trailer, but after watching it, this movie has a very concise vision and the themes are clear. Um, as ambiguous as some people may like to make this movie out to be, I found it to be pretty straightforward. Um, and judging by some of the interviews that we'll talk about later on the special features, I think David Cronenberg's intentions with this film are pretty straightforward as well. Um, although a distinct time and place aren't exactly illustrated here. In this world, uh, humans and plastic and toxic materials are almost as one now, to the point where some humans are actually living off eating and consuming plastic in the form of this bizarre purple candy bar that you see these people eating. And this movie feels like both a version of the future and the past, an aesthetic that David Cronenberg and his son Brandon have somehow crafted. There's nothing to date this film as far as modern technologies or any sort Sort of uh, culture references, although there's a TV here and there, they look like relics of the past. The only technology we really see are these futuristic technologies that uh, manipulate the body while it sleeps and eats. There's a couple of exam examples of this as Viggo Morton struggles to consume organic food. He's in this bizarre chair and it all looks like something H.R. Geiger would have designed from Alien or something. It's super weird and I kind of loved every mesmerizing stoic second of this movie. Viggo Morton uh, performance is so, it's just mesmerizing, has his own body, this new evolution um, that's being described in this movie where we start to live off plastics and shit. Viggo Mortensen's character is almost caught in the middle of this evolution. There's so many motifs and things that David Cronenberg has referenced in his older films having to do with these body horror aspects that it just felt like coming back home. This movie could have easily been made and released by Cronenberg in the 80s or 90s. It's uh, that of its time. It's it's really, really great. I highly recommend it. And I had not seen this movie. I didn't catch it in the theaters. Um, I didn't watch it until this movie arrived from Second Sight. Uh, and I'm so glad that I picked it up. Now, as far as the picture and audio quality, this movie wasn't shot on film. This movie was shot digitally, so it's uh, inherently clean. It wasn't in need of like a big restoration, but as far as what it'll look like on your TV, to me, it, it looked beautiful. It really did. This movie kind of lives in the shadows. So the HDR and the high definition really helps you kind of uh, make sense of these really dark frames that kind of populate most of the movie. Uh, the scenes that do take place during the day or outside, they look, they look great. Um, there's not a lot of color in this movie. There's only a handful of scenes where there's any color. This movie is filled with grays and creams and browns and black. As far as the audio, this is a very quiet movie. There's a, a brilliant score by Howard Shore, this jingly jangly, tingly kind of weird theme that goes through it with some nice sub drones. Uh, 
Um, but other than that, the movie is a lot of quiet, spoken, whispered dialogue. The picture and audio are very clear, and like I said, a lot of the dialogue is super, super quiet in this, so uh, it's a really good, clean audio mix. It looked and sounded fantastic. Now, as far as the rest of the special features go, uh, we have a new audio commentary by Callum Vatsendal. This guy is a writer, a director. He's written multiple books, uh, including a biography on Dick Miller, which is a really cool um, uh, old school actor that's been in a ton of stuff. Um, and he also wrote a uh, book covering the history of Canadian horror. So this guy knows his stuff. Um, I more gravitate towards commentaries by actors, directors, cinematographers, but in lieu of a director's commentary, this guy really, really knows his stuff. He knew Cronenberg's filmography in and out, and uh, I love the commentary. It's actually really good. Next up, we have Undeniably a Love Story, an interview with director David Cronenberg. This is an interview that I was pretty interested to check out just because I wanted to know what the hell he was trying to say with this movie. Was it straightforward like I thought it was? Or was it this big metaphorical, you know, uh, you know, abstract art film? And no, he has a pretty clear vision for what this movie was supposed to be. Uh, it's a great interview. Um, and then we have uh, interviews with Viggo Mortensen, uh, Leah Sindhu. Uh, then we have an interview with Kristen Stewart. These are very actory theory kind of process kind of interviews. I didn't get a lot out of these. These are this bunch of like pretentious actors speak about finding the center of the character and shit like that. Um, it's whatever. Uh, if you're into that stuff, they're pretty good, I guess. Uh, there's also an interview with producer Robert Lantos talking about how he sort of convinced David Cronenberg to pick up this script from 20 years ago and read it because he thought it'd be a great time to make the film after it was put on the back burner for almost 20 years. Um, so it's cool how this movie went from script to screen. Uh, and there's a lot of good stuff in that interview with the producer. There's also an interview with the cinematographer talking about how he worked with Cronenberg to achieve this kind of simplistic, sterile look of the film, which was pretty interesting. There's also an interview with the editor talking about how he worked with Cronenberg, and it's kind of interesting to hear how hands-off he was with the editing process. Great interview with him. There's also a video essay called New Flesh, Future Crimes, The Body and David Cronenberg, kind of dissecting his obsession with the body and just kind of going over his filmography and the recurring themes and motifs. It's a good little video essay. We have The Making of Crimes of the Future, which isn't really a traditional making of. It's basically just a series of sit-down interviews with all the people involved talking about David, talking about the script. Um, not really a making of in my opinion, but still good interviews. Uh, then we have production design materials and The Death of David Cronenberg, a short film starring David Cronenberg. So all in all, I loved this movie. This is easily in my top five Cronenbergs now. It's right up there with, honestly, it's up there with The Fly and Videodrome and Scanners and all of his best work. It's different and it feels more modern, but uh, every bit as good as his old stuff. So fantastic addition from Second Sight. Cheers to them again for another fantastic release. Let me know if you guys saw this movie, if you'll be picking up this edition of Crimes of the Future, guys, and I think we're done here. Stay weird. Remember to always be yourself, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.